Happy New Year, mamas. <laughs> um, it's February, but you know, January was kind of a wash around here. There's a lot going on. There was a lot that happened. There's still a lot going on, but you know, we're just gonna, we're gonna swoop into 2022 with the Lunar New Year. Um, if you've been hanging out with us for a while, then you know, last year, um, I started talking about my fertility journey and high PCOS and what we're doing to try to get on track to be able to go through a second journey to possibly have another baby. And that all just got completely sidelined uh, when I got into a really bad car accident in April last, last year. So I'm doing better. Um, and so we, uh, that one, that's our, that's our plan for this year is to get on track as long as everything stays aligned and nothing outrageous happens. Um, you know, maybe we'll have a baby. Maybe we'll, you know, we're going to see how, uh, how that goes. And, uh, I'm just going to talk to you about how we're going to do that. So here we go. One of the things I did before I got pregnant with Aria was went on a huge um, different way of eating. And, you know, it's not that we eat horribly. It's just that when you have PCOS, because it does involve insulin and hormones and all these other things that help your, that make your body work. One of the things you want to do is to try to keep things simple. And one of the, it's not easy, it's not easy. One of the simplest things that you can do is change your way of eating. Um, and so how we did that was I looked up PCOS diet. I looked up uh, a lot of information about how to eat when you have PCOS. And I found two cheat sheets for the grocery store that I'll share with you. I'll post the links to the actual images because if you go on Pinterest and try to find them, there's a lot of stuff on Pinterest. I'm just gonna upload the images and post links for you to directly to those images in the description box down below. And so the one that I use the most often is called the low glycemic glow, whoa, <laughs> low glycemic shopping list. Also, there is a cat on a very loud mattress next to me. So if you hear crinkling, I apologize. <laughs> okay, so low glycemic shopping list. And this is actually from Boston Children's Hospital. <laughs> can, you, can you see it? Yeah, you can't see it anyways, it's fine. Um, it's from Boston <laughs> Children's Hospital. And so basically what it is, is it gives you a list of what you can eat. Rather than telling you all of the crap that you can't, it says what you can. So you take, you save it to the images on your, there is nothing bad on my phone, I promise. You save it to your pictures and favorite it on your phone, on your cell phone, because everybody takes their phone to the grocery store, right? And it tells you like fruits you can get, it says following a low glycemic low diet can be easy when you have the right foods on hand. So use this list to fill your kitchen with healthy choices. And it tells you which, which fruits are low glycemic, uh, vegetables, what dairy products, what meats, which most meats are good, um, canned foods. It tells you what grains to get. Um, it also gives you brands of crackers that are good to get. Um, seasonings, condiments, it gives you a little bit of everything. And unfortunately, the, the beverage line is very small. Um, so I have that one. And then I also have one 
that oh, it's a little bit further up in my favorites is called the my P my PCOS diet cheat sheet from my PCOS kitchen.com. And she has a lot more stuff on here. Um, because some of the things are a lot more limited on hers. And so I would use, I use both, uh, to kind of narrow down what I'm buying at the grocery store. And so the other thing that I use besides those, those cheat sheets, which, which really, they were like lifesavers when we first started doing it, because there's so many things that I bought that, um, I didn't even realize were full of carbs because the idea is you want to eat as simply as you can. And by simply, I mean, you want things that your body can easily digest and break down. So simple sugars, um, white potatoes, white rice are full of starch, like high levels of starch. And that those are super complex carbohydrates and your body really has to work to break those down. So if you are not doing gluten, huge amounts of starch, if you're sticking to simple sugars, then your body does not have to work as hard to break your food down, which allows it to work to do other things like break the fat down, like maybe let you have a period or something. You know, it's, it's a simple idea. It's not the easiest thing in the world to do. But if you have things that help you, like when you're going grocery shopping and those are the only things that you're getting, then it's a little more easy to do and to stick with. Okay. The other thing that I'm going to utilize is hopefully I'll show you. Okay. Well, I'm not taking it. There we go. Is a weekly meal planner. Maybe I'll turn my brightness on my light down just a little bit. There we go. Is a weekly meal planner. And so this one came from like the dollar spot, I think at Target. And it has a list on this side where you write your grocery list and then on this side it's your meal planning um I actually got these for one for myself and one for my mother-in-law last year because we were going to meal plan together and you know that didn't work out um but you know weekly meal planning you write out your menus your shopping list for each week and like here's one that I did you can see I wrote down like everything that we needed there's an old one and I wrote out our meals that we were going to cook that week um and like well that was different things i think this might be anyways if you use it it works let me say that again if you use it it works so the big thing is it's such a change in your life because it's not a diet we're not going on a on a diet here okay we are changing part of our lifestyle it is a lifestyle change it's not a diet and we did really well with that lifestyle change um leading up to pregnancy all through pregnancy and even in the very beginning of aria's life but then it got so easy to just buy takeout food and buy the cheap stuff and I mean, it's not, it's not expensive to eat a low glycemic diet. It's not expensive. It's, um, but there are other things that are like, you know, you buy a five pack of macaroni and cheese and you buy a bunch of canned things and box things because it's just a lot easier to do. And it's like 10 bucks and you're done, which is great. And we do still get that kind of stuff. But I'm going to be honest, I, when we were doing this, we cooked a lot of stuff from like raw form. We got fresh vegetables. We did get meats and stuff like that, but we weren't buying a lot of box things. I still got canned things because there's still canned things that, you know, we need. And we still got, you know, bagged things and there were still some box things, but a lot of it was like raw foods and we weren't eating them raw. We're cooking them, but it's just a lot of sticking to the outside of the grocery store, not going down a lot of the aisles. Because huh, when you haven't had something in a long time, it is really tempting to just buy a lot of it. And that's hard. It's really hard. And 
you know, I signed up for Noom last year and I wasn't able to really take advantage of it because things got really hard. And when I got in that car accident and I'm, I'm utilizing that again. So that's another tool. Uh, this is not a sponsored ad. I'm not saying that you need to go out and sign up for Noom. The tool is being able to see what you're eating. If that helps you, I'm not good at diarying or journaling, but I can respond to a notification on my phone. So if there's an app out there, or if you like to write things down, do that. You know, record what you're eating. Um, if you're sticking to a meal plan, then that's there and you can see what you're eating. But if you're out and about and you're eating other things too, and that's important to you, if that's what's gonna help you stay on track, is seeing I'm eating these things, um, and like, oh, I ate these things and that's not helping me. I feel bad this week. Um, I'm, this isn't helping me. Like this isn't necessarily like a weight loss thing. I know it sounds like that. This is a way to meet a goal and to maintain it after that goal has been achieved. Does that make sense? Like it's a lifestyle change. And when you have PCOS, Sometimes that is the only way that you can get through it is with lifestyle changes. And it's not easy. It's hard work. It is dedication. And I think that's one of the things that I've struggled with so much because as much as I want another baby, because I do, I, I really, really do. I have that goal in mind, but there's so many roadblocks that I just let stop me that I couldn't dedicate myself to the path that I know that it takes to reach that goal. Okay. And that's, what's hard. That's what's hard when you struggle with infertility. That's one of the things that's hard when you struggle with infertility and PCOS is, you know, there are ways to get there. And in some cases, you know what you need to do and what works for you, but it's doing it every day because when the downfalls hit you, when the, the pains hit you, when you remember how hard it is, it can stop you and it can completely discourage you, even though you really want that end goal of a baby or of feeling better. If you already have the, if you already have your, your kids, or if you're in a place where you're happy where you are, but you still live with PCOS, it's still important for you to be able to feel good. You know, like you don't want to have cramps. You don't want headaches. You don't, maybe you want to have a period. I don't miss having a period. I do in the way in the, in the fertility sense, but in like the, you know, having a period since I don't miss that but you know there's these different things that you want that average regular people have you know what I mean like it's just it's a matter of figuring out what you want and how you need to get there and what I want I know how to get there I just have to be dedicated and hold myself accountable and have other people hold me accountable too. And so I have a very supportive husband. Um, and you know, you're typically your kids are going to eat whatever you feed them. Hopefully, fingers crossed, unless you've got picky eaters and well, say <sighs> lovey. But um, this is what I know I need to do. And if this can help you, then I hope that you take advantage of the list that I'm going to put in the description box because that helps so much. The first two months I took my list out every time we were going to go buy groceries and I didn't buy anything that wasn't on that list. Those are the only things that I bought. And then it became second nature that I just knew what to get. And I still know what to get, but I'm going to tell you that list is going with me to the grocery store because I, you know, we forget sometimes, and sometimes we need that reminder of this is what's on the list. So anyways, that's what's up. <laughs> um, the other thing is like, if you have an agenda, 
and you can you know write if you, some people have agendas that they keep in their um in their purses and like you have today's schedule you have to do's you have tonight maybe you write down what you're going to be eating that day because i know when i'm at work if i forget my lunch chick-fil-a is right next door and panera delivers within 30 minutes um so sometimes if you write down in your agenda if that's how you 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 know you do your day to day is you have a physical agenda in your hand write that down an extra step write it down in your agenda to help remind you that this is what you're eating today or this is what you're doing or write goals write an achievement for the week this week i did this this week i did that um <laughs> this week i had a period like that's a huge achievement when you have bcos okay um but yeah, so this is not the most exciting vlog, <laughs> but I hope it's been helpful, informative, something for you. Um, you know, let me know down below, like, do you have PCOS? Do you suffer with infertility? Like, what do you do? Have you made eating changes? Do you like take medication? I also take medication. That's something that I stopped because I am... Um, well, I couldn't remember anything. <laughs> oh, I couldn't remember anything. Um, and then I started taking um, Zoloft. I, I started uh, a program with Cerebral in the fall because I needed it. I was in such a bad place after that car accident that I wasn't reaching out and talking to people. And when, when you have PCOS, you are more likely to... Uh, suffer with uh mental stuff as well it can be linked it can absolutely be linked because your hormones are fluctuating and insulin is involved in everything your body does everything so that's another thing like it's not just physical it's emotional and mental too so if you are suffering with depression or you feel like you can't get above it or if you are going through things with the PCOS and you just you can't focus you can't you feel like you're being brought down like maybe check out cerebral maybe talk to your doctor talk to somebody because it could be depression trying to creep in you know like it's not something that we want to admit as women or as mothers that we you know struggle with anxiety and depression and insomnia, but I do. And I have a great therapist that I meet with now um, on the online. And I have medication that chemically balances me out because that's what at this point in my life I need. And so I started taking that and I'm this month starting again with metformin, which also helps the insulin and helps to hopefully level that out. So my personal plan for 2022 in managing my PCOS and hopefully reaching my goal, our goal, our family goal of having another baby or at least getting pregnant, you know what I'm saying, um, is we are changing our eating lifestyle, okay? Um, I'm also trying yoga because, you know, it, it can be centering. Uh, I'm not necessarily doing yoga for weight loss. I'm doing yoga for flexibility and for mindfulness. And uh, I am continuing with the medication that's been prescribed to me. Um, the other thing is, is if you are struggling with fructose stuff and your doctor is not taking you seriously, um, you feel like you are not being heard, I highly encourage you to find another doctor or at least ask for a second opinion. I found my doctor because she was recommended to me um, as a PCOS specialist because one of my friends said, it sounds like you have PCOS. And so I just started with a PCOS specialist. And if she's like, no, nah, you're normal, then I was gonna be like, that's cool. Do you wanna be a doctor anyways? And if she was like, no, not really, then I would've seen somebody else in the practice. But it's what I ended up having, and I'm really glad that I started with her because she's been so amazing and supportive for 
10 years almost I've been with her, 10 years. Before that, I had no idea. And I know I've talked to different women that, that are like, well, my doctor says I just need to keep trying and this and that and blah, blah, blah. You need a doctor that hears you and truly sees you. If they're not listening, then you need to find somebody that will listen. Okay, please. You need to find somebody who will listen and who will truly support you in any way, <clears throat> any way, shape or form that they can. So 2022 is all about you in whatever way that means to you. Whatever is on your, your mind, your heart that you want to do this year, you go out and do it and you get the support that you need for it. If it's in your fertility journey, please get the support that you need. If it's here following along with me, if it's following along with somebody else, if it's a local support group, get it, girl. Okay. You're not alone. And I'm, I'm excited to see how this year goes. And I'm excited to share it with you because hopefully it won't be a lot of tears and disappointment like it was last year. Um, but if it is, such is life and we'll keep going. Thank you for being here with me, um, with us, for supporting us, for, you know, listening. <laughs> um, make sure you're following us on social media, at Momsly Me on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Uh, we have a Patreon account. If you would like to support us on Patreon, that would be amazing. We have awesome uh, gifts that we, are, we give to our Patreons on there. Uh, there's also going to be special giveaways throughout the year. So check it out. Links are down below. And that's all I have. I'll see you next time. Bye, moms.